Hello and welcome to my knife channel. Well, we have a another one of those long rifle. Now this is not the same as the rifleman, so this is gonna be a smooth one instead of a but this one also has a nice sleeve with it. I think the first um long rifle I got just came with just the tin and not the sleeve. So that one's got that. I mean, if you're going to have stuff, you might as well get the complete stuff it came with. Now, right here, it shows a long rifle. For those of you that don't know about weaponry and stuff, um, for the longest time, um, rifles, the word rifle can mean like two things. One, it's like, a, uh, you know, what we think of as, you know, this is a rifle and not a pistol. But rifle also means rifling. And uh, that's the twist in the barrel that basically gives a bullet its spin and uh, increases accurately, accuracy significantly. Um, with a smoothbore round ball in a, in a musket, uh, you could do everything right, you know, aim and everything else and the delayed ignition and do, you know, work everything, hold everything perfectly. And the thing could just go whoop you know, spiral out of the barrel and uh, completely miss whatever you're aiming for. And if you're a hunter, um, that can mean the difference between you and your family eating that week or not with that one shot. So uh, it made a big difference. And it also makes a big difference in accuracy of military weapons. But anyways, that's what they're talking about here. And um, during the Revolutionary War in America... We had uh, rifle barreled muskets and uh, that were basically German um, engineers brought it over, but they, they put together rifled weapons and they would be long. The barrels would be really long on them. I think I might have a picture somewhere of one. But let's get to this one. This one is a hunter, folding hunter pattern. And it has a nice bone pattern on it right here let's see if it if it shows whether it's muskets could be you know like flintlock but later they improved to percussion yeah this is a flintlock a, a firing mechanism so a piece of flint would be on this that they usually carried around and there'd be a pan there'd be a, a little piece of metal that they would strike i think called a frizzen and there would be a little pan there so you'd it's a pretty elaborate process for loading a black powder rifle. You know, it wasn't fast. But you take part of your powder and pour it in there. And you put the powder in, in, the, in the barrel. And you take a long rod, usually attached underneath here. And you put your lead ball down there. Sometimes you put a patch with it. <clears throat> All the way down into the rod, you hammer it down like churning butter or something. You'd smack it down there. I think, oh, and then you'd put the powder in. You, you wouldn't have to do this first because you'd have to tilt this thing up and slam it down. Yeah, but then you put you prime your powder there and cock it back. And when you pull the trigger, there's a delay because this thing would strike and you're dealing with black powder. So it's kind of like a little fuse. Go and there's a little hole in a the barrel there. And, uh, well, of course, you had to have powder when you put that in. Don't go by me on loading black powder weapons, but there's ho this whole procedure you would have to go through before you could fire a, a black powder rifle, and uh, it wasn't quick. And that's where you get those powder horns, you know, like the, the horn-shaped um, knives and stuff. Uh, it's not only from, you know, an antler and stuff, but powder was kept. You know, they would just take a horn, and they would cap it off, and this end right here would have like a little cork and a piece of rope or something attached to it. And you'd pull that off and then the whole horn, you know, would be back here hollowed out. And you just, you'd use that for loading your stuff. Yeah, we got it easy with cartridges nowadays. But before they, after they started using flintlock, they switched to percussion, which made it a lot easier. You just had a little cap, like a little shotgun primer cap you put that there and when you pull the trigger it would fire it'd still be that delayed kind of you know 
click bang type of stuff but anyways what we've got here two life long nail necks let's get back to it's a knife channel not a firearms channel yeah but i mean i i dealt with guns a lot but i didn't mess around with black powder a whole lot when i i mean i was exposed to it but it's about five and a half inches overall let's look at the other side but yeah this they really did this bone well. I mean, if you compare it to the other one, this one's nice, but they made it really very dark, you know, which is also nice. I mean, it's nice, but man, this one. I mean, it really came out nicely. <clears throat> All right, so the first blade we got is a little clip blade here. I mean, a straight back drop point he's got in there zoom in and see if we can't see this i'm running off um that solar light again i got the light on in the camera too i guess but all right then focus here then i can touch this there we go stop bouncing but yeah they did this pretty nice this is long rifle and it's got the rough rider tank stamp Then you got China, 440 razor sharp steel. Ting. I'll check for blade wrap after this because I haven't really looked at this one. Now here's a nice clip blade. And the Rough Rider with an eye, tang stamp, a horseshoe. And then you can't see it, but there's this guy on a horse running. Ooh. Man, it's got pretty strong pull on that one. Let me lock this guy. Let me unzoom this. We're in zoomage mode. <coughs> but yeah, you've got a nice saber grind on this guy right here. It goes up. Now, one way you can tell, even though I know this is a saber grind, but let's check with the other blade. If you if you're if you're one or this thing. Is this thing a flat ground, which I think it is, or is it a hollow grind? So one one easy way is to get something, you know, that doesn't give, and put it on there. And if it makes complete contact all the way down, it's a flat grind. But if you get a dip in there, you know, like a gap, usually like a belly straight through there, you've got a hollow grind. Usually you can feel that, but sometimes it's pretty subtle. You might have a slight hollow grind in there. All right, so let's get the measurementos again. What are we doing here? All right, so the main blade, I think it's about a four inch overall main blade. Yeah, three and a half, but four inch overall. Let me get this guy. Move out of the way so we can see over here. There we go. The camera. Yeah, it's about almost three and a quarter inch but you got a little over i don't know the count the sixteenths and all that other stuff but yeah it's a nice saber grind kind of like looks like they did a pretty good job let's look at the edge because i haven't sharpened it or anything yeah it looks pretty good those scratches are it was new new in box or whatever it hadn't been used there's kind of a double bevel going on there. But the overall shape of it is pretty good. I'll cut some paper with it here in a little bit. All right, let's look at this guy's edge. Yeah. It's going to need some stropping. But they did a pretty good job. I've seen much worse. Usually they... It's hard for them to get it right up here and down here. Usually on the tip, you got a little bit of a um, blade rub there from it, this guy hitting the liner. Let's look at that. Yeah, see it's close on this side. It's smacking a little bit. To me, that's no big issue. Um... 
if I paid like 150 bucks for it, yeah. Yeah, I'd have issues. That these guys would have to be like perfectly centered. But I think this one was only like about 30. Got some gappage going on there, I believe. Let me zoom in a little bit, take a little closer look. Yeah, a little bit of gap for the spring. Nice nail nicks on them. The pole, it, you know, it, it resists you coming up that 45 degree angle. Let me unzoom this guy. The pole kind of resists you right about here. You get the most resistance. And then up here, there's nothing. And then... Or about there, all of a sudden, snap. Let me let, let it snap on its own. Got pretty good thunk. Nice. You know, I don't mind if this is not super, you know, perfect. You know, maybe they had to take off a little bit of metal and everything. It just, as far as like fit and finish, if they get that right. Let's try this guy. Oh, he's got a better smack. It's a combination of the springs, how strong are the springs, and how well they interface. It's just basically two flat pieces, you know. If this is cut 90 degrees, you know, and perfectly straight, then everything's fine. But if you start getting wonky, let's see if it'll focus down here on this. No. I meant to touch the camera. I was touching this. I was like, focus here. <laughs> yeah, um... This interface right here is your lock. So that's usually easy for them if they just cut the metal straight. It should be the same way on the tang. But sometimes they get crazy back here with the blade when they're making it. And they're cutting this area out here for the pivot. And if it doesn't line up good, like I've had them where, uh, like on that marbles where that lock back I can pull up like this and you can feel it rocking even though it's a lock back this one's not anyway we're not talking about marbles other than me losing my marbles yeah there's a slight I can't tell if I'm getting this ridge I think I'm just picking up this ridge yeah I was gonna say there's a slight feeling of a transition here but it's just this ring the thread or whatever you want to call it. I guess threads would be like multiple threads and this is just a ring. But that's all you feel on that. These guys are smooth. The pins are smooth. I didn't even know those were there just by going by feel. Same way with this. And this shield doesn't stick out proud. Somebody was wondering since the other the other shields, you know, had fallen off if if these would fall off. Well, you know, with a longer piece, if you got glue on either end and in the center, sometimes that'll stick better because you've got more glue. So, I don't know. I haven't carried any of these around much, you know, in my pocket and stuff like that. So, I don't know how they would hold up or regular use on the shields. But, yeah, all in all, it's a pretty nice knife. I wouldn't go crazy with them. Sometimes, man, they start... They start doing the bidding, and you look at it, and it's like $39 plus eleven ninety five shipping. And you're like, man. I mean, these are nice knives, but man, you start paying 50 bucks for them and stuff here. You're getting a little crazy. But, you know, let's just look at this guy zoomed in a little bit more. Ooh. It almost looks like wood grain the way that they, they did the dyeing on this. It catches this one pretty, pretty good here. See, this kind of just looks like normal. I mean, it's good. It's dark and everything. But this really, if they had a, it's just the amount of dye, I guess, you throw in. You throw in too much, and it's just going to black it all out. But this is perfect. I really like the way they did that. I mean, that's just zoomed in and under the light. When you look at it from eye's distance, you go, wow, that's a piece of wood. <laughs> like, no, it's a piece of bone. Yeah, you got like a little horn end here, like the, the powder horn type thing, and uh, a big head up here, and nothing's sticking up. You can easily stick this in your pocket and not have any problem. Um, I don't have a big sheath. 
anywhere hiding around right now but i was gonna see how it fit with the sheath let me check see if i got that always an excuse to whip out the 97 i paid so much for it it might as well earn it you know it's got this nice long clip point we're not gonna mess with it too much but i mean yeah all right but we're looking at the sheath so the same sheath that that one came out of let's see if fat head will go first yeah, it'll actually fit in there. This is the large slip from Rough Rider. So yeah, and, and this comes in handy with this part right here because if it gets too far in there, you don't have anything to grab onto. So yeah, the large slip will work on that. Put that up. So yeah, that's all we got left is the weight. And then we're out of here. I should have some more according to the postal system. <laughs> I should have some more knives in tomorrow. Be day now. Our life ticking by. It's going to start out in ounces. 6.3. So yeah, you'd feel this puppy. That's almost with uh, Buck 110 Folding Hunter range there. Oh yeah, we need Grammys. Hundred and seventy nine grams and the scales only up to two hundred grams. So yeah, you're reaching your weight limit there. Yeah, you'd feel it. But all in all, it's a pretty nice knife. Um they had they had one of these not in this not in a muskrat pattern, but another rifleman series on eBay, and it was a toothpick it was a large toothpick and i went uh and then originally the bid had start off it started off at 19 dollars, and i was gonna bid on it but i think it's up to like 20 or 30 dollars and they've already uh you know plus shipping and stuff so but rent you know the thing about these are if you, if you don't see them right then you sometimes you can wait around and Brand new ones, you know, like new old stock. What are you doing over there? Look at that hair hiding there. New old stock will pop in and um, you'll get them, but, or you be, might be able to get them. To me, it's it's like, how bad do you want to fill up a collection? You know, I mean, like if you're saying, oh, I need to get every one of these. Well, not if a guy wants like $300, you know, for this one. And it's your missing piece, you know. Uh, to me, collecting these things are like putting a jiz jigsaw puzzle together. You know, you want to see a complete picture. Here's a picture it gave you, you know, and you're just missing this piece right here of the horn. And you you want to complete the collection. Well, all right, you know, so you've got it cle complete. You already know what it is. You already know what it looks like. But still, I'm getting off on a tangent as usual. So, yeah, there there is. It's the, um, I guess this is um, a trapper. A trapper. A large trapper. Ow. I call it large. A snap. Oh, yeah, let's check for... I don't see any. Is there any blade wrap? I'm just looking at that secondary light right here along the edge. They're looking for a dent. I don't see one. Well, let's go over here. I don't feel any grittiness either when opening these up. I haven't cleaned this. haven't put any oil on it. Nope. I don't see any blade wrap. Usually, it's going to be along where they've got a raised area. Well, there isn't any. Usually, there's a raised area down there. I don't see one. Sometimes they'll have a raised area on the metal. And then when you slam this thing down, ping, your pin wrap will come right there. And there's tricks you can try that are temporary and stuff to, to build up the kick and stuff. But uh, that's usually what you usually have to do is raise up the kick. And if you do that, 
then you run into the possibility of your tip sticking up. And that's even worse because then you reach into your pocket and then, ah, blood test. See what your blood sugar level is. Break out your meter. There you go. Well, I better let you go. So, yeah, I don't have any more of these Long Rifle or Rifle Man series coming in right now, but I'm going to keep my eye out for any of them that pop up. But thank you for watching and have a nice day.